This episode of Let's Knit Together is sponsored by Yarndex.com, the yarn directory. Hi there, I'm Kat. Let's knit together. Today, part two of our trip to Alaska. After leaving Fairbanks, we took the scenic railroad to Denali National Park. On the train ride, I started knitting a cowl with the kiviet that I picked up in Fairbanks. This was going to be my memento for the trip. After a few days in beautiful Denali, we traveled to a lodge nearer to Mount McKinley. The weather was perfect, and we sat relaxing on the porch with an incredible view of the mountain. Of course, I continued knitting my cowl. Then we headed to Anchorage. As soon as we got to the hotel, we immediately dropped off our stuff and headed over to see the unique headquarters for the Umingmak Cooperative. The cooperative coordinates production and sales for native Alaskan Kiviut knitters. Kiviut is extremely easy to spin. It's a very long fiber. Uh, it can go, it can be anywhere from uh, usually an inch to three inches long. It's a very, very strong fiber. Back in 1969, the muskox that were the starters for the cooperative were captured from Greenland by a gentleman named John Teal. And they um, went ahead and captured mostly babies, uh, both uh, males and females, a group of 34 animals and then brought them up to Fairbanks. And that was the original site of the muskox farm. We don't shear them like sheep, it's combed off the animals. So we stick them into small little stalls and then just comb it off of them. And since it comes off in such huge sheets like that, it comes off very cleanly. The oh. guard hairs stay on permanently oh. and grow to lengths of about three feet or something. We purchase it from the farm and then we have to wait until we have about 600 pounds. Then we have uh, we send it on off to be spun into this yarn here. That's done at Cashmere Mills on the east coast of the United States. It takes about uh, five years to come from this process to the finished items. This uh, fine yarn is then sent on out to the western villages of Alaska, where we have about 200 native ladies um, who do all the hand knitting of the items. The flags on that map behind you there. They uh, represent the villages where we have knitters. Knitters make a variety of hats, scarves, headbands, and then also this item here. This item is designed to move, go up over your head and around your neck. It's called a smoke ring. In Yupik, it's called a najak. The najaks and the scarves come in different patterns depending on the villages where the ladies are from. They are very, very light and soft. Eight times warmer than sheep's wool by weight will not shrink in any temperature of water. Each of the different villages have their own different patterns. And this basically represents a 1,200 year old ivory carving of a harpoon head that was found in the village. Do the uh, knitters get together to design the pattern or is they, one, the, one person wins the design? The ones, uh, the ones at the beginning got together and designed that pattern. It wasn't just one person, it was a group effort. Can you tell us a little bit about the colored or the stranded? Those sure. Are, those seem to be unique from the from the lace. Yes, pieces. they are. Yeah, these here are 100% kibbut. The ones over there were actually uh, started to celebrate us being in business for 30 years, oh. and that was in 1999. It's a combination yarn. It's 80% uh, kibbut and 20% silk. We've gone ahead and bleached part of that combination yarn to get the white color. Oh. This is a headband. It's a, called. It's in the potlatch pattern. And as you can see, it does have a reversible design on it. That's beautiful. Uh -huh. And are any of these also representative of villages themselves? No, no, no these are just more uh, more generic designs. Uh, they're commonly found on uh, Scandinavian uh, sweaters and also uh, Irish sweaters and things like that. We don't sell any of the thin yarn whatsoever. <laughs> what we do sell is in the form of a cap kit. That's a two ounce skein of sport weight yarn or eight ply yarn set up to make one of the three caps on the front. And the caps come out to look something like that there. Mm -hmm. Are these fold? Mm -hmm. Are these fold or felted in any way? No, no, they're not felted mm -hmm. at all. Kivia being such a fine fiber, it does not felt, does not pill. 
or any of the other problems that uh, wool has. It doesn't have any barbs in it, nor does it have any lamel in it. So that eliminates an awful lot of the scratchiness that uh, people have problems with wool. All of our items do go through a washing and blocking process though. They come into us in small little packages since everything that we do is through the post office. Mm. And so the knitters send them in to us, we go ahead and wash them and then block them onto these boards just like this is being done here. Uh, this one here is a Nelson Island star. We just go ahead and stretch it out, just make the, uh, sure that the edges are nice and straight. And it also clears up the inside so we can just make sure that there's no drop stitches, mistake in the pattern or something like that. But I mean, we have knitters who um, knit a wine item every three years. We have knitters who knit um, up to 150 items in a year. And it just really depends. The way that they're paid is they're paid, uh, each of the items has a certain amount of stitches in them and they're paid per stitch so it's a different price per de for each item mm -hmm. and then um, there is a dividend at the end of the year since it is, a, it is cooperative and that's based on how well the cooperative does for that year okay. last year's dividend was about 40 percent mm -hmm. so we are giving back quite a bit to the uh, to the villages help us win a streamy award click on the streamy button in the sidebar of our website and vote for let's knit together under best reality or documentary web series you can vote once per day until january 22nd thanks our next live show will be saturday january 30th 2010 at 6 p.m eastern go to let's knit together.com live for details i've been collecting vintage knitting magazines over the years because i love the classic styles most of the yarns for these patterns are unavailable, so you need to find a substitute. Even when the yarn still is available, I often want something different anyway. That's when I go to Yarndex.com, a sister site to Yarn Market. Yarndex.com is an amazing reference for yarns, both new and old. On the site, you can search by brand, weight, fiber, texture, and more. Every yarn has a details page where you can find out about the yardage, fiber content, care, and if the yarn is still in production. It's really a great tool to help you choose the best substitute yarn for your next project. Check it out at Yarndex.com. And remember, if you happen to be shopping at YarnMarket.com, leave a comment at checkout thanking them for sponsoring our show. Thank you all for your great comments and what inspires you to knit. Many of you had some really touching stories about how you started and what keeps you knitting. And now, the winner of the Abbey Collection yarn is... Mike and Erica from Orlando, Florida. If you haven't done so already, please contact Deb at Yarn Market to pick out your color choice and give them your address to ship the yarn. All right, ready? Mm-hmm. We gotta do one, two, three, I guess, otherwise we won't be able to do it together. Yes. Okay. <laughs> one, two, Three. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays! See, I didn't do it like evenly. Like one, two, three evenly. I'll do one, two, three evenly now this time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ready? One, two, three. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays! You only say, you don't say the happy part. <laughs> okay. Are you saying the happy part? I'm having trouble hearing you. Why? Ready? One, two, three. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays! Okay. Let me get it.